First of all, on the uh, end, uh, right, um, actually, if you're looking here, I'm pointing right at you. Steve Kelly, just wave your hand. Steve Ke Kelly, editorial cartoons. In 2010, Steve joined with Jeff Parker to launch Dustin. Kelly, the writer of uh, Dustin, uses his humor to make Dustin work for audiences. His editorial cartoons have won numerous awards, including six first place finishes from the California Newspaper Publishers Association. In 2001, he won first place awards from the CNPA, the Los Angeles Press Club, and the Best of the West competition. That same year, he also won the National Headliner Award. Ladies and gentlemen, how about a round of applause for Steve Kelly with us today. It's a nice plaque as well, too. And next we have Sandra Bell Lundy. You can raise your hand right there. Being Canadian born, she began her career as a cartoonist by creating comics for her university campus newspaper, a women's networking newsletter, and some newspaper ads. In 1994, Between Friends attracted the attention of King Features and is now syndicated to nearly 130 newspapers worldwide, such as the Toronto Star, the Montreal Gazette, the Calgary Herald, the Seattle Times, and the Tucson Citizen, and the Houston Chronicle. Ladies and gentlemen, Sandra Bell Lundy with us today. <laughs> and next we have Stephen Silver with us. Stephen, if you will wait, raise your hand so everybody can see you. Stephen Silver was born in London, England in August uh, of 1972, aspiring to be a professional artist his whole life and knowing drawing would be his vocation. He got his professional start in 1992, drawing caricatures at SeaWorld in San Diego. He has des uh, designed for Disney television animation, Sony feature animation, and Nickelodeon animation, designing characters for shows such as Kim Possible, Danny Phantom, Kevin Smith's, Clerks, the animated series, and many, many more. Again, Stephen Silver from California with us today. And next we have Jeff Parker. Raise your hand there, Jeff. Growing up with rockets on Florida's Space Coast, Jeff first began drawing editorial cartoons for Florida Environment News Magazine in 1989 followed by Orlando Business Journal in 1990 before joining his hometown newspaper, Florida Today, in 1992. His cartoons are distributed to hundreds of national and international news media outlets by KegelCartoons.com. Jeff is a member of both the NCS and the Association of American Editorial Cartoonists. His cartoon recognition includes awards from Gannett News Service, Society of Professional Journalists, Florida Society of Newspaper Editors, Florida Press Club, Florida Press Association, and the First Amendment Foundation. Ladies and gentlemen, Jeff Parker. Our mole rat came from the writers whose son actually had a naked mole rat as a pet, and they told this would be a great sidekick uh, for his character. So often my students on Disney, um, it, it, this industry too, they don't, they don't put you in to the animation studio to get a nice comfortable chair and you work there for the next 20, 30 years. You work there for as long as the show's on the air. The show may be on the air for six months. It could be on the air for five years. It could be on The Simpsons for 25 years. So you never know how long you're actually going to be at a place for. So for me, it was always important to keep working on my craft, keep learning. Um, but they laid me off. After I'd been at Disney already for about four or five years, and they're like, thanks for your service. See you later. And that was it. So while I was um, just sitting around, kind of creator and he was doing a new show. Um, so I got the opportunity to design this show. So that was really great. Spent um, about five years at Nickelodeon. Um, during that time I was called by uh, Sony Picture Animation to do development on a movie called Cloud for the Jobs and Equals, where that I stayed there for a year and was just doing lots of development. So that was a lot of great stuff. And these are CG models based on the designs that I had done in the development stage. Um, so it's great just to work with the models, you take my characters and then you start to turn it into 3D. And then Sony, when I was finished there, I was hired back at Disney Television Animation where I worked on this show called uh, Replacements. Um, and then from there, once that was over, I went back. 
back to Nickelodeon, where I was signing on a show called The Penguins of Madagascar, did some work on The Cleveland Show, and then the, this was this other prime time episode. So you can see the range of styles. Yeah, I have to be versatile. That's what gave me the employment uh, all the time. And during that time, I decided, you know, I don't like all this having to go from one studio to the next. There's a lot of unemployment in the industry. Uh, but I didn't want to be that guy who was just found myself unemployed. So I started during that time publishing my own books on all the knowledge that I've gained. So this became this side business that I was doing. And I've always had that entrepreneurial mind. I've always just wanted to create my own things. I was never really one just to uh, just sit there and want to be where someone told me to be. And um, I made that decision after about, um, this was about five years ago, the last show I was on was Penguins of Madagascar at Nickelodeon. I decided, you know what, I just want to work from home now and my kids grow up. I don't want to be in the studios anymore. I know that I can do this. I don't have to rely on the studios. And that's what I've been doing for the last five years. I've just been working on my own independent projects. Still designing for the studios, but it's funny when all of a sudden you're at home now and tell people I'm just working at home, they'll seem to just say, okay, that's fine. You know, they'll just say, no problem, okay, great. So that's been really great. So during that time, I've been working on my own different projects. This is just an illustration for this character I created with a friend of mine called Johnny Rogers and this guy in Adventures, and it's with an iPad. So I started making apps. And this is like an ebook for kids just a storytelling and you can flip through the different pages and click on the and click on different things and it makes noises and it's a little bit of an animation. Then I started to realize, you know, as an artist I always use reference a lot, not all the time, but I use it very heavily in order just to improve my skills. So I thought there's no really good pose books out there. I look at pose books, so I want to draw from something I found in stiff, and I have to draw these terrific models at Disney Feature. Because um, I go to Disney Feature at lunchtime every day and draw these great models. And uh, so I decided, hey, you know what, I'm going to contact them and see if they would pose for me. So my concept was to create this whole new book where I would create all these different poses of these guys in their clothes in action, where you can take the model, you can learn how to draw hands, you can draw facial features. Uh, and this, this is just some of the steps that I go through. So what I would do, my first step is to find the shape and the rhythm of my design. The next thing I'll do is I'll lay um, a piece of paper on top of that and then start to add all the details within my design. And then I'll lay another piece of paper on top of it and then start to create even more and define even more. But I'm never tracing what's underneath the drawing before. And then I'll just add some color or something to Photoshop. And the funny thing, the fun, the fun thing was, was when I start something, I never know what's going to happen. And that's the beauty of life. You, know, you don't know what's going to happen. So I decided I wanted to do this pose, but how do you do a pose? Book? Well, first thing I had to do was just get that image in my mind. I wanted a pose. Book. The next thing I had to do was try to find a studio where I was going to shoot the, the photographs. Because I decided, well, I guess maybe I'm not a photographer, but I'll shoot the photographs. I got a camera. And so I went to the studio and I had the ball, and then they had all these lights <laughs> set up. And they didn't have lights set up. And so I went on YouTube and typed in three-point lighting, how to do three-point lighting, and I learned it in about 10 minutes on YouTube, and so I was good to go. So I was able to take all my own photographs and do everything, and then I started to put everything together, and that's kind of like how I like to roll, just kind of see what happens. Or I'm trying to come up with tons of different ideas, uh, different variety, what does it look like, I'm showing it to my directors, they say yes, they say no. Um, and then it wasn't until I did the drawing in the top left over there where they said, yeah, I think you're hitting something. This is the sort of direction you want to go. And this is where it already just uh, started. And here's some early development, too, of the main characters. Uh, in the top left, you can see Kim Possible. She was a uh, little short of hair. Uh, she wasn't as fit looking as she became, but I would get notes from the director saying she needs to be more fit. She means she's an athlete. She needs to do this. She needs to do that. So this was... Um, the part of the process. And when I'm drawing, I often like to draw the characters doing something. By having them do something, that kind of gives me an idea of uh, just the way they may look like inside you, back you. Uh, so that's really important. And here's some of the other characters uh, that I chose.
showed earlier. Um, as a designer, you have to draw anything from drawing cockroaches to kangaroos. It doesn't matter. This is your responsibility because you never know what's going to be presented in the show. Every show that I did, I would have anywhere from about 50 to 150 characters that I had to design in about three weeks. Sometimes I had to clean them up, sometimes I didn't. Um, so speed was a factor. Luckily, because I did characters for so long, that really built up the speed, so I was able to get these um, pretty quickly. And then here's just some different variations of the different characters. Just showing you, so you have to draw the cheerleaders, have to draw pilots, have to draw, you know, there are a lot of cool villains um, in the show. I have to draw mobsters, I have to draw scientists, and how many different ways can you draw scientists? Uh, you have to learn how to draw hands, learn how to draw feet, um, just getting the expression. So up to this stage, there would be where I'd have to do a turnaround, and I've got to show the front and side and back of the character. Okay. Uh, so a lot of the time, my drawing is done by hand. I like the traditional aspect of scanning a lot of my work and coloring the computer. It's just quicker, because all of a sudden, if I'm just drawing that beige paint, the, the director says, no, it needs to be pink. I don't have to go back and redraw the whole thing. I can just change the color in the computer uh, very easily. So here's some more designs. Here's some designs from Danny Phantom. This was some early development, and this was about a ghost uh, kid. This was very early development of Danny Phantom. Again, not knowing what this char these characters are supposed to look like. It's my job to try to come up with that look. And even from here, the ones on the top, some of you may see the subtlety, but the ones on the bottom, it kind of became a little bit more like the show where the all cats where the director wanted the eyes more round and just wanted a lot more simplified things. You know, I get descriptions like there's a ghost lunch lady. That's, an, that's all I get. Ghost lunch lady. And then there's, you read the script. And then I have to try to come up with, well, what does that ghost lunch lady look like? So I'll come up with a bunch of different variations and then I would show them to my director and then he would pick the one uh, that he wanted. Uh, this was for a licensing uh, deal where I made a bunch of these um, and they put them on Russian nesting dolls, um, just the different stages of Michael Jackson. That was just a lot of fun. Um, this was for the Goonies. Uh, it was a movie where Warner Brothers was going to do an animated series based on that, but they decided not to because all the uh, all the kids who are now all grown up because the Warner Brothers didn't want to pay them money and all this and they said well then you can't use my likeness and all this other stuff so they ended up killing the whole uh, project um, that was just a promotional poster we did so after i was doing the movies then i just started to draw my own versions of movies and things that i liked like what would the characters look like if i drew back to the future um how would it look if i drew like a 1966 batman you know television batman uh, characters um indiana jones the last crusade what would those characters look like if I were to do them in an animated style? This was the Beatles. I love the Beatles. What if I were to design up the bobbleheads and do the Beatles and bobbleheads? Well, how would they go? Here's uh, just the Star Wars crew there. How would I do those guys? And again, just I would ink it, scan it in, and then color it in the computer. Uh, this was a Napoleon Dynamite um, a movie. This was how would I draw Christopher Reeve? Um, Superman, if I were to draw him. Uh, so here you can see the black and white, but I just have the black and white, and then you can see how the color. So it's almost just a drop bucket, they call drop bucket film, where you just take your bucket and your Photoshop on the computer and just basically drop color into it. Uh, this was for a licensing deal where people have gone along and it's a licensing. Licensing is a great thing because I can just do something once and then you get to uh, just get your own residuals on everything you make. You know, people ask me to be like, oh, we can't possibly do anything like that. No. When any work in the studios, they own everything. Okay, so here is the famous cottonwood known as the Dreaming Tree, which unfortunately was killed by weather. Uh, it does have a seedling that has grown quite a bit that uh, they planted with some water from and soil from Disneyland right over here. But this is the world famous dreaming tree, or what's left of it. <laughs>